The password is in my favorite picture. Your favorite picture. I don't have a picture yet. Could it possibly? Or maybe I can't take it, so it's not in my inventory. Shining star Kiki, connect the dots. Kiki has her crown, shoes, and red dress. She's ready to shine on stage. There's a lot of numbers here. Mom? Hmm. That's translated though, so I feel like it must be important. Your favorite picture. Oh, what in the world? This is a special interview. With me. Mr. Do. Am I stressed out about... Oh, genius scriptwriter, Mr. Do. Winning awards left and right. Amazing romance scenarios. Highest TV ratings. Is this some kind of like, it's, is this trying to say like, oh, the award, me getting the award is built on top of all these things. Flower pot note. You've turned my deepest misery into a comforting flower. Oh. Flower pot. There's pens in it. Hmm. Do you... Is that a hint? You've turned my deepest miseries into a comforting flower? <laughs> Can't put the vinyl here either, can I? Probably not. No. I wonder if we can see that hole in the wall. Tale of Sigu... Hmm? Tsugu Guanyin? Spirit Serpent. According to legend, it happened in a small village in southern Fujian. There once lived a poor farmer, whose son was too frail to work in the fields. Instead, he was sent to a Buddhist temple to train as a novice monk. Gradually, he became stronger and occasionally journeyed back home to assist his father and tend to their crops. One day, while working in the fields, they came upon a massive, striped snake. Apprehensive at first, they approached it slowly, but soon came to understand that it bore them no malice. It would drive away pests like insects and mice, guaranteeing the farmer a good harvest for many successive years. Ho. Oh. A magical snake. Guan Yin is the... Um, I think. It's the golden statue that we saw behind that portrait earlier. Because mm, Guan Yin is like, not a god, but a prominent figure in Buddhism. Tsugu Guan Yin, is that like a special kind of Guan Yin? I'm not too sure on the details myself. Camera stand. Letter from an old friend. To Mr. Du Feng Yu. Your screenplay, The Lives I've Lived, has been rejected by six directors. May I suggest you drop that fruitless obsession and seriously consider coming up with a new script. If any offense has been taken, I beg your forgiveness. Wishing you the very best, your friend, Ding Huai De. Oh, even though he was winning so many awards previously, but not this one. This play is not working out. Huh. I don't have a shadow. Thank <laughs> you.
Very specifically talking about me. We had friends over the other day, and we didn't clean up. Between the two of us, yeah, we both had our own successful careers, but my wife is the one who had to give up all that she was doing previously to take care of the home. Meanwhile, I'm not making any changes or, you know, being considerate of my family. It seems. Lord. I don't have a camera I can put here. Maybe I get that from... From the treasure? The lock code, I'm thinking. But have I come across her favorite picture yet? Machines? Oh, I'm leaving! Yeah, I can go back. I can go back, but who are you? I think this is only complete if we get the last one too, right? Recent movie, The Fluttering Feathers, premieres on the big screen, panned by critics nationwide for being extremely anticlimactic and having a poor script. Prize singer retires from spotlight to devote life to family. Gong Li Fang says farewell to entertainment business. There used to be an article here, but it's been torn off. Yeah, we're definitely missing the... Um, the... favorite picture thing. Is it possible that it's from another place though? Or... It shouldn't be, right? Because chronologically, it's 1980 right now. She wouldn't have a favorite picture in 1985. So probably we've missed something here. Maybe let me see if I can try to find that. Cough medicine. Oh my god, I was just walking around and that suddenly turned on by itself. Yeah, I had a look around the whole place. I don't think whatever we need is here. Maybe we really have to go to the other places. Mm, unless if I'm being really blind today, which hopefully isn't the case. So this means that we probably just have to um, move on to... 1985. Like, freaking myself out over nothing. As usual. Yeah, so... If you look at the doors here... Here, it was more of a normal household. But then here, we have that mirror thing. That deflects negative energy. So, at this point... Bad things have already started happening. 1985. Oh my god. Ali Shan Travel Guide? Oh, uh, I guess they were wanting to go to travel together? Yeah, okay. Ooh. Getting more light isn't a bad thing. Yeah, they have all their bags packed. 
packed up already. Locked suitcase. Oh no. On it, it says, yeah, I can't trust daddy. Because he lied. He lied about something? Probably something like, oh, you said you were gonna go play with me on whatever date, but you, you broke your promise. Don't want to look at that portrait. Oh my god. The door shaking. At this point, you know how earlier we saw the hole in the wall? Was that really from 1980? Or, mm, I guess I still have trouble piecing it together in my head. Wine brew doodles, drawing by Mei Shin based on my wine poem. Shoes, a crown, and a red dress are the basic elements of a superstar. Oh, and we've already seen a lot of red things so far, haven't we? The red shoes, and a red umbrella too. Not sure what that represents. But now, maybe we have an idea. Red things represent being a superstar. Is that just the- oh, that's just the grocery list, I think. Oh, there's already a lot of, like, burning talismans and stuff. Definitely something bad has already happened by this time. Poem attached to wine pot. My beloved child, the wine will follow you, sweet and ripe, brewing in the pot. Mother's three blessings, wishing your silhouette, embraced by silk, wishing your hair, illuminated by stars, wishing your steps, admired by all. As I await patiently, let time mold you into a lustrous jewel. I'm not sure what the symbolism behind a wine pot is, but I'm guessing it's some sort of a luck thing too. Wishing prosperity. That's basically the theme behind everything the Chinese people do. They want prosperity and good fortune. Don't look at the window. Don't look at the window. You find it creepy how the, the portrait... You usually can't see anything, but you can... That the, the girl is always visible, Mei Sheen. Praying already. Essay. My family. There are three people in my family. My father, my mother, and I. My mother is a housewife who likes to sing while she is cooking. My mother used to be a famous star. Every song she sings sounds perfect. My father is a screenwriter. He writes a lot of words every day. He often works late and I can't bother him when he works or my mother will scold me. Although I am sick and can't go to school often, mom and dad always take care of me at home. My mom says if I get better, I'll be able to play outside more often. I love my mommy and daddy, and I wish for us to have a healthy and loving life. Ninety-five out of a hundred. Good composition. Hmm. Yeah, so by this point, Mei Xin has been afflicted with some mysterious illness already, and it's not letting up. Oh my god. Incense. Uh, praying. Praying. Burning paper. Mm -hmm. It's all forms of praying. Oh. Do I have to give her something? Machine. 
God, my entire body is cold right now. I wonder who the ghost... Hmm. Hold on, let me just make sure this area is safe first before I talk, okay? <laughs> Tale of Tsugu Guanyin, the sacrifice. However, nothing good lasts forever. One year, the novice monk suddenly fell victim to an illness. It ravaged his body and soul. He could not eat for days. His health declined rapidly, but the village doctors were stumped. The farmer could do nothing but worry endlessly. At this time, the snake abruptly appeared and said to the farmer, I am a spirit serpent, a thousand years of age. Since your child's birth, I have witnessed his resolve, his great sense of duty, and filial piety. His virtuousness outshines even my own. Let me help him through this troublesome bout. Heed my instructions. My flesh and blood, brewed into a medicinal wine, shall remedy his condition instantly. Medicinal wine? The wine pot? The great spirit serpent delivers a fatal bite unto himself, offering his body to the ever grateful farmer. Oh. A self-sacrifice to help save this farmer's son. Does this mean that instead of going to the hospital, the dad is going for alternative medicine based on superstitious legends? This concept of filial piety very, 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 very important in Chinese culture. Your elders, your parents, they took the time and effort to raise you. So you have to pay them back as a child of your parent. Lord. As I was going to say earlier, though. Yeah, actually, do you mind if we stay on the screen right now? Because I don't want to talk while walking around. <laughs> um, I think so far, the ghost that we've seen is our wife, right? When we first started, I thought Mei Xin was going to be the, the scary ghost because in the first cutscene, we got, Hey, where's Mei Xin? Where's Mei Xin? Oh, she's gone. Now she's coming back to haunt you. But no, interestingly enough, the ghostly happening so far seemed to mostly revolve around my wife. Yeah, all those scary things. With the exception of that scary doll thing that we just saw, of course. You know, this color of blankets and stuff kind of reminds me of newlyweds. But it's it's been a while since they've been married, so that's probably not a thing. No lock here. What am I doing here then? I have... Oh, can I give the doll red shoes? God. Oh my god. It doesn't seem like there is anything here. Oh. Why did it say that? What did I look at just now? Did I roll over something that said big liar? I don't Oh, okay. I thought it just suddenly came up. Liar, liar. All talk. Daddy lies. I mean, there's not much that I can... School Correspondence Journal 2 Thursday, June 13, 1985 It's boring at home. The same stuff keeps playing on TV, but I'm sick, so I can't go to school. I've been to so many doctors, but I am still not feeling well. I have to write in my journal because my classmates do too. Friday, June 14, 1985 Today, I have to feed Daddy's arowana fish. It must be sad being stuck in its fish tank. Just like me and my house. Hmm. Well, the one silver lining is that your mom is with you. Whoa.
the Mei Xin Show. Yeah, like the Mei Xin, do Mei Xin Theater. The alarm. Do machine. Because of my script writing job, I guess. I'm the one in the tank now. Wash your hands. Disease prevention is a civic duty. Department of Health caring for the public. Yeah, they were already all packed, and then he suddenly said he can't go. That does kind of suck, especially since she doesn't get out a lot. Window. Oh, that's what's inside the, the treasure spot. Oh my god. Oh, the actual fish. Did you kill the fish? Fish eye? Hmm. Is the fish eye needed for... Hmm. Well, we got a fish eye out of that. Did she say it was related to the wardrobe? I was too scared to pay attention. <laughs> Oh, I was wondering why it's so dark. There we go. Well, I guess we'll have a quick spin around here again, but I think that really is it. Hmm. It's not really a big deal. Oh. Yeah, it's not a big deal that Mei Xin killed a fish, but it's a big deal that the fish represents prosperity. School Correspondence Journal 3, Saturday, June 15, 1985. It's the weekend. Dad said that if I took my medicine, he would take me out to play, but he was lying again. I really took my medicine. I was good today, but mom and dad still lied to me. Sunday, June 16, 1985. 
Dad bought a bunch of vitamins, but I don't want to take it. It doesn't make me better. We were supposed to go out and play, but we didn't. Daddy always lies. I don't want any vitamins. It doesn't make me better. We were supposed to go out and play, but we didn't. Daddy always lies. I won't take any more. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. Mmm, kids are very, like... They definitely hold grudges about that sort of thing. Mom, you promised that we would do this, but we're not doing it. Mmm... We do have the... Yeah, but... I wonder how effective treatment can be when the person themselves is not co-op... Cooperating. Is that it for here, then? I want it to be it. <laughs> yeah, I want it to be it. Can we leave? Although, I'm a little worried that if I leave now, maybe I'll be missing where to put the marble. Thank god that's locked. Oh! It's not even locked here. Oh? Do I have to- Oh, the marble! The marble! I put the marble on here, right? Can you not look at me? That symbol in the middle there. Mm, it's the path to becoming a superstar. You get applause? Stars? The red dress, the microphone, the fame and glory. The symbol in the middle, I think, is the, the logo of the show on TV. Suitcase key. Hidden by Meishin. Please stop turning off my lighter. Let's go, let's go. No, not again. Oh! You're gonna... You're gonna get bad eyesight if you go that closely. Flowers and love. Meishin always requests I read this to her at bedtime. Of course. Meishin? Even the pose, she's waiting. On some level, I feel like I shouldn't be scared of my daughter. You know, she's my daughter. Flowers and love. The bottom is just information on the publisher or whatever. Shoo shoo shoo! Baba lai da lie la. Today, the forest has appeared in a very large tree. 爸爸的弓箭准准命中山猪的脚，山猪好生气，他冲了过来，用力把爸爸撞倒了。回家后，小女儿莎莎不眠不休的照顾爸爸，但是爸爸的身体总是好痛好痛，帮爸爸擦药、喝汤都没有用，躺在床上好多天、好多夜。爸爸的病都好不起来，莎莎难过的睡不着了
，他决定要出门寻找治好爸爸的方法。It's like the opposite of our situation. The the dad and the daughter's place switched. 莎莎翻山越岭，到了风摇神的宫殿。风摇神的宫殿是一座金色的大房子，在森林的正中央，大门就开着，只要是森林的居民都可以自己进去。It's a welcoming place. 莎莎说：“求求你，治好我爸爸的病。”风饶神说：“这是一种神奇的花，只要它盛开，再严重的病痛都会痊愈哦。”风饶神给了莎莎一颗种子，但是你得用最珍贵的东西灌溉它。风饶神说。莎莎心想：“爸爸有说过，全世界最珍贵的神水就在天空树上。”莎莎启程了，她走出风饶神的宫殿，她来到小森林，一路向前。Oh, oh, I love how earlier in the pages they were completely static, but then they started moving things around. Oh. Wow, I'm not used to this color palette. <laughs> Which we can do something with, right? Let me check the back here. Is this customary? No.、Nope. We can throw the apple. Have it. <laughs> Mr. Bear, I don't suppose we can jump. No. There's got to be something back here, right? Can we knock on the tree again? Bribe the bear, <laughs> or we can throw it—I don't know—in the middle of the the place that we need to cross. <laughs> yeah, like. Does that work? <laughs> Not really. Maybe I'll get you another apple. <laughs> so the goddess of fertility they mentioned in this story. I think it's supposed to correspond to the Guan Yin that we've been seeing. Is it a benevolent figure though? Oh, we gotta throw it across the place, probably. Okay. I mean, traditionally the Guan Yin is a benevolent figure, but I feel like um, because earlier, besides for that golden statue, we've actually also seen it around the house, closer to the beginning of the game. It was just one of the random paintings next to my work desk. Didn't pay much attention to it then, but、uh, I noticed it because. That Guan Yin is on a lot of the promotional materials for devotion. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bear.
that's nice. This is not nice. Climb the mushroom blades, maybe? Is that a horn or? Oh, am I gonna pretend to be one of them? <laughs> Excuse me, just coming through. Please and thank you. <laughs> That's cute. But from this really small interaction, you can tell that Meishin's dad loved her. He never refutes her ideas for solving these problems. And Meishin's a very good kid too. She doesn't want to just use these animals and get across. She wants to help them out too. What about this way? Nothing. <laughs> Is the owl going to object? Hopefully not. Oh! I thought that was the owl. Not like that. Would you like an acorn? <gasps> no. Your baby! Is it related to this little fella here? If I put it here, you can't come back over, right? Oh, it's a worm. You don't want the acorn, you want a worm. The kiki thing. That way, nobody gets hurt. Zomohoi,神水竟然早就已经干掉了。没有最珍贵的水,就没有办法让花开了。把他叫来床边,告诉他 
，花苞绽放成一朵美丽的郁金香。原来，女儿就是他最珍贵的东西。爸爸的病好了，为了感谢风饶神，父女两人一起把花种到土里。山坡上开了好多好多的郁金香，风饶神也好开心。从此以后，莎莎和爸爸一起照顾这片花海，永远开开心心的生活在一起。嗯、um, ，If only our story could end that nicely. Uh, I wonder if it means anything that the mother wasn't in the story at all. Maybe it's just to highlight the the bond between the dad and the daughter. I don't know. Origami tulip. Can we put this in the flower pot back in the 1980 room? She's sleeping. Rest well, Meishin. Even though I might be the one responsible for all this happening in the first place, now I can leave, right? Is it all right? And we'll know if we've gotten everything. Yeah, we're still missing some stuff. Okay, that wasn't here before. Yeah, we're still missing two pieces. Friday science tip. Doctor Shin Hong's column: Melancholy is a precursor to anxiety. Sudden changes in living environment can exacerbate condition. Hmm. Well, we know that Mei Shin wasn't very happy, was she? 